welcome to the final event of the year. That's crazy. It really, I mean, it felt like a really long time, but also like it came and went, kind of. Um, this is our final event, and uh, you know, I, again, I appreciate those of you who have come tonight. Please, as Matthew's right now, come get some pizza. We have so much pizza, pizza and drinks. Consume it all, and there's not a big group of you, so there's not a there's not a two piece rule this time around. Um, yeah, so this is the final event of the semester. Uh, the final thing I sort of want to put on your guys' radar, I'm sure there's plenty on your radars already. One more thing, one more thing. Next week um, is, a week from today, is the Pilot Data Initiation Ceremony. Um, and I know that there are some of you who are being initiated. Um, I'll be there, I'll be speaking, I'll be helping uh, get everyone checked in. So come by, it's on reading day, so you guys have nothing else going on, right? No final story about Come see me, come say hi. It'll be the first one in person in three years, so we're really excited to see how it goes, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see you there. Um, and just final, final remarks before we get started here, because I feel like I need to, you know, sort of, I'm not gonna be president uh, next year, so I sort of wanna give a little send off here. Um, again, uh, I sort of said this last week after elections, but I do wanna reiterate it. Um, this year was crazy. Maybe not as crazy as last year, but still pretty crazy, and uh, you know, I know a lot of other student orgs um, either ceased to exist entirely or, uh, you know, just weren't able to keep up with whatever crazy stuff was happening. Um, and I'm so, 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 so grateful that we've had a community all year um, and managed to keep events going once a week every year. Um, those of you, I, you know, people I'm looking at right now, you're regulars, um, you've been here through it all, and I know that you've had a really busy schedule. So thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. It's truly, truly been my pleasure, pleasure to be president. Um, it's been a great experience. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the fantastic year. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it off to Shannon, our vice president, who is also departing with me. Shannon. Yeah, I also am leaving, and I want to thank all of you for giving me such a welcoming community these past few years. I, as you know, I'm very, a very scientific mindset. I did um, biology, and then because of this club, also did a history minor. Um, so yeah, I am leaving you guys next year, going off to med school, which I've heard the past few weeks. So that's that. But I'll keep in mind all of our history, history. Uh, nonsense and business, bring it on with me to med school and hopefully we'll get some more history buffs out of it. <laughs> yes, we're always mixing science and history, that's the hope, right? <laughs> gotta keep it mixing. So yeah, guys, um, you've got a great uh, group of officers for next year, um, and I'm really excited to see where the club goes. You know, I've got another semester, so I'll still be around a little bit. I'm not going to be present anymore. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, get these finals done. You know, enjoy the rest of your summer. We will get there. Uh, and with that, I will pass it off to our first speaker, uh, Chris Cortez. Um, and I will let you introduce yourself because you'll do a much better job than me. We give Chris a round of applause. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for the introduction, Sam. And thank you to Dr. Irwin and the History Club for having me come speak today. Um, as he said, my name is Chris Cortez. I'm a fifth year here at Ohio State. Uh, I was enrolled in a uh, dual degree program for a bachelor's and master's degree uh, in history with a specialization in public history. Um, it's a very interesting program. If any of you are thinking of doing postgraduate study in uh, history, I would highly recommend that you check that out. It's on the history uh, website. Um, it's with uh, Dr. David Staley, he's a futurist and a digital historian. Um, he's brought so much of a different perspective than what I got in my undergraduate study. Um, not that my undergraduate study was bad by any means. Um, <laughs> it was great. Um, in my undergraduate degree, which I will be graduating with this semester, I studied history, uh, focusing on European history and international studies, also focused in Western Europe. Um, and I got a minor in German. Um, so in that, throughout the course of my like, undergraduate study, I sort of realized that although I loved European history and it was still very near and dear to my heart, that I wanted to study something a little more practic practicable, if that makes any sense. Um, and so the public history program sort of stuck out to me as something that I wanted to do. 
Um, I didn't know what public history was like at all. I was like, oh, public history, is that the history of the public? And like, maybe it is, I still don't know, I'm almost done. Um, and it's, it's very historical in that everything is contingent um, and it really depends who you ask what it means. Um, and so the, the program with Dr. Staley has been absolutely incredible. Um, you sit, even though it's sort of like an advanced undergraduate program, it is a true master's degree. I will be receiving a single piece of paper that says Master of Arts in History. Um, and if that's like the type of thing that you want to get into, you want to look at how history that is generated in a very academic setting in what some people describe as like the ivory tower of history. Um, public history is really the way that that sort of like highly academic research can be presented to the public um, and to many different kinds of publics. Um, and those are the types of things that you learn about in this program, um, whether it's like historians working in government to help shape policy, whether it's historians working in museums, um, whether it's a history museum or a science museum or an art museum, there's always a, uh, an avenue for historians and the historian's perspective to make their way into these things. Um, one other thing that I've been able to get out of this program is uh, a few great internships, um, if that's something that you're interested in. Dr. Staley is a wizard at just pulling things out of thin air um, and being like, hey, do you want to do this thing? Absolutely. Um, which the program itself sort of acts like that. Um, you don't have to take the GED to get in, or not the GED, the GRE to get in. Um, so if you're not a great standardized test taker, take a look at this program. Like, I promise, it, it's really interesting. Um, but I was able to complete an internship last summer with the Ohio Historical Records Advisory Board, um, going throughout courthouses and municipal buildings in southwest Ohio to look for manumission records for African Americans in the 1800s. Um, because until 1832, uh, African Americans were required to register their freedom with the state um, in order, partially as an order of control, um, so that the white dominated government of Ohio could like, know where these people were, um, but also as a measure of safety for southern slave patrols that would come north um, and just sort of sweep people up if they didn't have papers. Um, and so just being able to, having that exposure to not just that history which I had never encountered before, but the actual physical process of going to courthouses, digging through very poorly kept records in basements uh, and closets. Um, is not something that I would have access to without this program. Uh, I'm also part of an internship this, well, it was sort of supposed to be this semester. There's been lots of logistical snafus. Um, it's with the, um, it's through Ohio State, it's with the Department, or the Defense and POW Accounting Agency, um, which is uh, part of the Department of Defense. We're digitizing radiographs from World War II to help identify unidentified remains uh, from World War II. Um, essentially comparing these uh, x-rays that were taken to check whether service members had tuberculosis to remains that have no uh, tags, no identity, no DNA uh, that we can access. Um, and though we still have not received the x-rays, that is something that will be uh, ongoing. Um, and it is something that I got access to because of the program that I'm part of um, in public history. Um, the I guess like the last part of my program is my thesis. Um, it is a, you complete a master's thesis as normal. Um, it's really interesting because at Ohio State there is no uh, terminal master's program here. Like if you, if you come here for graduate school, you're on your route to a doctorate. Um, but this program obviously does end in a master's. Um, so my master's thesis is a three part um, museum proposal and study on Appalachian labor history. Um, very different from my undergraduate study. As I said, I was looking for something a little more practical. Um, and that was a history that I felt it sort of exists outside of public knowledge, public consciousness, um, and public memory. Um, and so that is another really interesting thing about this program is you get the chance to sort of study whatever topic it is that you want. Um, there aren't really uh, labor historians here at Ohio State, or at least none who's, that's like their primary specialization. Um, so being able to sort of do that on my own time um, 
well, as a part of this program, has been a really incredible experience. Um, and I messed up my paperwork. I did not submit my application to graduate for the master's degree in time because it's due the third Friday of the semester, which is very early. Um, so keep on top of your graduation paperwork. Um, so now instead of defending this semester, I have to defend over the summer. Um, but since I finished my thesis already, I will be defending it the first week of summer term and then doing nothing the rest of the summer and then getting my degree. So um, assuming all goes well. Um, but that's sort of my background, uh, my preliminary background of the Public History Master's Program. Um, I'm happy to field any questions, um, and thank you all for being here. Yeah. Right. Hi. Um, you mentioned you were doing a, or you did a minor in German? Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, doing a minor in a foreign language, I'm doing Italian. Um, and you hear a lot about how, you know, in those departments, how doing a minor, a double major, you know, really helps you once you're out of undergrad and you're doing to do it for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, have, that, have you been able to sort of use your minor um, in any of the stuff you're doing now, or are there maybe plans? Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so in my case, not really. Um, just because of the, the internships I'm applying to um, have been like sort of in Ohio um, for American history type things. Um, but, there certainly are programs. There's like international exchange programs. I know with German, there's like the Congress Bundestag exchange. Um, there are absolutely ways that you can use a minor or a double major in a foreign language to advance your research interests, especially if you want to do research in whatever language you uh, are majoring in or have proficiency in. Um, so like if I wanted to go to Germany and do a, a German history project. That is something that I would have access to as, um, obviously like those things are competitive, it's not like I wouldn't just like walk through the door, but um, having that, and having the perspective on whatever the history is of that language or that region through studies in that department is also something different that you're gonna get just through the history department. So like learning about German history in the German department is a different perspective than learning about it through the history department, um, which, you know, as learning about public history, perspectives are extremely important. Um, and so if you're on the fence about doing a foreign language or something like that, I would say absolutely go for it. Um, you will never be sad that, it, right, it's never going to be like, look bad that you studied a foreign language. Um, it's only giving positives for me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I will say you're not alone with the paperwork scare. Um, <laughs> that comes fast. Yeah, yeah, it sneaks up on you. And undergraduate applications are in like March. But graduate is January 28th. And I didn't find that out until the second week of February. So <laughs> keep your <laughs> read your handbooks. Um, all right, well, if there's no other questions, I will um, take my seat and say thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Chris.